Welcome to the Edelheit Experience, a compelling conversation about revolutionizing health and well being, bringing you rich stories and lessons learned from leading corporate executives. Now, we'd like to introduce your host, Jonathan Edelheit. This is Jonathan Edelheit, and I want to welcome everyone to the Edelheit Experience. I'm excited to have today Bob uh, Kelly. Bob, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, uh, Jonathan. This is really great. And I've listened to parts of your podcast uh, from the different people you've had from the conference. And I think there's some really great information here. So I'm glad to be part of it. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited to have you on because you're you know, just such a genuine and kind person. And it just comes out. Um, you know, I feel like out of your aura. So I just, I just want to share that, um, uh, you know, some people are cutthroat in the world, you know, some people are just average or normal. Uh, but you know, I just get the sense you're a very kind person. So it'd be great if you can kind of share a little background for our listeners, Bob, about what, what you do. Great. Thank you so much, much, Jonathan. I've always enjoyed helping people. So I've been in the HR world for quite a long time, hitting on 30 years in HR and benefits and really enjoy that. And Ben, one of the newest paths is financial well-being and financial wellness. And that's why we're here today. And that's the topic that I did get to speak on at the Healthcare Revolution Conference. So I know a lot of people enjoy that. We're seeing more and more of that. So helping people has always been one of my things. And working in the voluntary benefits arena right now, that's becoming a big topic because we really want to help people with the benefits. And then some of the voluntary benefits help support the health plan that is in place in, in different ways with people and financially. And I have worked in a state retirement system, which is a big system that helps a lot of people uh, with their retirement. And you can see when you run things on that type of a large scale, that little things can have a big impact on people. So that is one of the reasons that led me to HR and benefits. And, and you don't work for a small organization, like how many employees or retirees, I mean, how many do you serve? Yeah, with the state of North Carolina and specifically with the North Carolina Office of State Human Resources, we oversee the voluntary benefits program within the benefit structure. And right about 125,000 employees, give or take, at the state agencies, state universities, along with some of the state community colleges and state public charter schools. So it's a good number of people. When I was at the state retirement system, which is a different leg of state government, they have over 900,000 members in the state retirement system. So that's a large system of retirees. They also include the K through 12 and some other aspects of state government that aren't centralized under the voluntary benefit. So the state is big in several different ways. Why are you so passionate about financial well-being? You know, finance it, it, it does affect people's lives uh, directly and indirectly. And not everyone has their financial house in order. And as we know, they don't teach finance in school. So it's kind of hit or miss. Did your parents teach you? Was it a relative? Did you teach yourself? I know I sp spoke with someone from the sports world at a conference on financial wellness, and he goes, when you leave the professional sports world, there's no one there to tell you what to do with your money. This, the same thing for everyone as we switch jobs, what do we do with our 401k? As we go throughout life, should we be saving more? Should we be saving less? Is there things we can do to stretch our dollars and in Pacific with employers, our benefit dollars? So there is things that people can do over time typically that can really help them out financially because there's a lot of financial stress as we'll talk about today around a lot of stress in general but finance does cause some stress and there's some ways to help alleviate some of that stress so would hate to work your whole lifetime and at the end save nothing for retirement have nothing in place after all that hard work and effort people put in so i'm passionate that people have, you know, some money to be able to maneuver, you know, after all their hard work, because everyone works hard, as we know. So we want something to show for it at the end. It's, it's interesting that you, you know, you said like, you know, no one really teaches us the financial side, because I, I, you know, I, I didn't even think about that. But um, a lot of people probably don't know, but like March of this year, the governor of Florida actually passed a financial literacy law, 
which now mandates that students like have to get instruction before they graduate and whether it's bank accounts, taxes, credit stores, managing debt. And when I, when I heard that, I was like, wait a minute, like this is what they need to teach in you know middle school, high school, college to everyone um, because it's so it's so complex but has such a big impact I think on our state of happiness, mental health, uh, everything. Why why do you think that you know financial wellness in the past or well being has just been kind of this side thought or this thing that people didn't care care about because I think now it should be like the number one priority because it has such a big impact on people. Yeah, it seems like recently, especially with uh, COVID-19 around the world, with the recent economic downturn uh, affecting a lot of people and employers, it's kind of highlighted it. And people are really thinking about it right now. It is, you know, as employee stress is up and employee financial stress, employers are looking at it too, as it's affecting employees and employers. And for whatever reason, school may have become technical and they just didn't get into uh, daily finance of any sort. And we know that's not something that's typically there. And you mentioned the state of Florida is one of the most recent states. I think there's 12 to 15 possibly where in high school, you either take a class or two within your curriculum to graduate, you know, that is on the financial wellness realm. So it's starting to hit a little bit, but it's still not a a full-fledged thing that people would do, I believe, all four years in the high schools and in the junior highs also, but it is starting to gain some ground because you really want to be able to manage your economic life. Money's not everything, but it's always great to have options. And that's one thing, you know, that we all want is to have options and have our financial house in order per se. Well, at the end of the day too, you know, I'm a big believer that I think the financial well-being side has a huge impact on, on productivity at work, on your mental health, on your physical health, because I think there's a lot of things that we're attacking at the end of the road. Um, And and this might be extreme in saying it, but I'm just going to use it as an example, right? Maybe I have um, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, I've got other issues. In reality, you know, we're giving that person medication. Some of that stuff may become just from the financial well-being side of just maybe you're in debt, maybe you didn't save enough, and you're constantly worried about it. I think that um, we need to start looking at kind of the foundational elements that are really causing issues for people and investing there from a proactive standpoint. Yes. I mean, you know, financial wellness is different things to different people, like you said, you know, with this specific example, uh, people are spending money on things. Are they saving money? You know, we all want to be able to meet our current and future obligations as they're getting these prescriptions. We know there's co-payments, deductibles, as you mentioned with that, most of the employers are offering health insurance. Uh, some employers are also offering the health care flexible spending account. I did run into an employer in the last year or so that was not. But we know with that healthcare flexible spending account, you can save some pre-tax dollars in your pocket for these out-of-pocket medical, dental, and vision expenses, such as the prescription that you mentioned. Oh, someone needs some glasses, there'll be some deductibles and co-payments with that, or they may not even have vision insurance and they can use their flexible spending account. Some money left in their pocket, they can use for some other things. So this is one way that employers can help people with the different benefits that they offer and you know, that example of the healthcare flexible spending account is definitely there. And, you know, as you mentioned, it is affecting employers too. As we look at HR periodicals, webinars, and conferences, we can see stress is at an all time high. And then I took an interest in this because there's a financial stress aspect to all of our stress that's affecting many people. And just to throw out a couple of stats to show the trends in some of the studies I've looked at, when I was getting ready for the conference, 65% of employees are stressed out about their finances. So that's two thirds of the workforce. And then leading into the workforce and to the employer, another study shown 15 hours of lost productivity per employee per week worrying about finances. So this is hitting the employee and the employer. And there are some things the employee can do as a win-win uh, to help with this that we'll also discuss. So. 
tacking a little bit of the stress a bit at a time is a, a good thing because we, as we tackle the financial stress, we can tackle the overall stress that people are worried about. And as you said, it does affect the productivity. So there are some things in place that can help that. Is, is financial well-being one size fits all, or do you need to, to have a lot of different solutions that meet people where their needs are and where they're at? I'm glad you mentioned to meet people where their needs are because everyone's on a different path of, path of financial wellness and in different phases of life. So, you know, they have a different type of financial things that they're thinking about. And talking about the financial stress, that is one thing that's affecting employees, which is why we're here today. And everyone being on a different path, there's a different items that employers can do if you want to do a financial wellness. One of the things you can do is, you know, look at the benefits package. We know that when employees are looking to leave a job or looking for jobs, they just don't look at salary, but they're looking at the benefits offered. And one of the studies that I was looking at, 75% of employees likely to leave their job for an employer offering better financial benefits. So not only are employees looking at the whole package, but they're looking at several different things. And some of the things to help with retain and recruit from an employer strategy would be to offer some financial benefits. We mentioned the flexible spending account already. Another thing might be student loan assistance. There's a part of the workforce that would want the student loan assistance because they're coming out of college with student loans. Not everyone has that. As you said, everyone's on a different path, but that would be something that would be great to offer uh, people Another thing is pay time off. I know one of your other podcast hosts that you had on talked about pay time off. People don't always think of that as a financial benefit, but it's definitely a benefit that's there. So people can take time off to be with family, friends, or whatever it may be in their personal life, have a little break from work. And people don't think of it as the financial because sometimes if you don't take it all, you might be paid out the end of the year so some people may be saving for that or some people can roll over their paid time off so that's another thing and i think people are looking at that because some companies may not offer a lot of time off teleworking is another thing that could be on the list not everyone wants to telework not every job can telework but for those that can telework it's not just for the convenience of work life balance which is definitely there that's going to help stress but with telework and if you're not driving to work you're not spending that gas and now with gas going up on the national tv here everyone's looking at their gas prices what they're going to do for summer vacation what they're going to do for work how long they want to travel we know commutes can be anywhere from 30 minutes we know up to two hours across the country sometimes on the western uh, part of the country there can be some longer commutes so people are looking at that's money in their pocket if they're not spending so much on gas they don't have to go in uh, the full five days a week. And of course, they're going to save uh, travel time at the at the same time. Also with telework, and you could point out to employees that uh, we love to go out to eat together when we're at work. But with telework and you're eating at home, typically you're not going out alone to get a meal. You're not at work trying to have meals delivered with extra delivery fees and the cost of the meal. And then not just going out with coworkers during the week to restaurants that might be more money than being at home. So, you know, you want to point these things out to people that these things are there to help you and how it can help people. Another one is the 401k match. Important is the financial education piece. You know, for, you know, should employers just be saying, let's put in solutions or, or is the financial education more of a foundation or do they go hand in hand? How, you know, and, and is it, is, is, Financial education is something that should be done once or it needs to be done continually? Well, if I, I think what we should do is every employee is going to do it a little bit different too, separate from the employees being in a different place. So with the state of North Carolina, we're able with us to focus in on the benefits package because we have a really strong benefits package. And at the same time, we have the state employees credit union that people can access. So that can give people a place to go for some financial support. And then we go over the benefits, the best way to use them as we gave some of these recent examples. So some people can save some extra money in their pocket. Maybe they'd want to start that emergency fund. That's another thing some employers offer. And some employers are starting to even offer a match to 
uh, fund in an emergency fund. So that's a new thing. Some employers will want, they don't have a resource in place like a state employees credit union for their employees. They may need to bring in uh, a TPA or a third party uh, to, to work with employees to give them a little more of the financial side along with the uh, benefit side that's offered them. So it's going to be done differently. And I think uh, continuously looking at uh, what you offer employees is a good thing. And it also, when you offer uh, financial wellness, at least when the employees come, they have that time to sit down and think about the financial wellness during that time. So at least they've got that time. And then the big help that employers can do is show the resources where people can go for help with the different things uh, dealing with financial wellness. Because that's another roadblock sometimes is where do I go for something? So I, I, people in psychology, um, you know, what they're thinking, what they think is valuable, what they think is their priority. You know, we're all in different places. We've all got different opinions. I have found it very hard, even with my, within my own organization, to get, you know, some of the younger employees to, you know, put away in their 401k, even though we're matching, no matter how many times I really share personal stories and how important it is. So how, how do you approach, I mean, you, you work, you've got a lot of employees in North Carolina, like, how do you deal with that of, of trying to, you know, meaningfully connect and engage and get them to pay attention, um, you know, or, or help them with decisions? Like, how do you do that over such a large organization? And do you have any recommendations? Yeah, that's one that is uh, really tough on a lot of employers to, to get people to want to connect and do things. Uh, one of the things uh, we had done in the past is partner when we started all of this with our HR units to make sure they, because there's many HR units within the state, to make sure they are getting out the information we put out to employees, including these financial wellness classes that they have and so people can take them. And as they push that out from the employer standpoint, most people tend to think the employer has the best interest of the employee in mind. So if you do, let's say you outsource a financial wellness that you need to for the reason that you need to, if there is some promotion, keep the promotion with the employer also. So as the company you work with may help draft promotions, have the employer send it out because employees really trust the employee. They're more likely to come to the financial wellness class. And then what we do is many of us where I work, we come from the, the, the background of the employees uh, within a system and we're able to hone in on you know, what would be uh, beneficial to them. And we really try to hit the financial aspect as we go through our benefits package of utilizing it different ways you can save money in it. Because in that aspect, that gives you some money maybe to save towards that emergency fund. It would be hard just to go out and say everyone have an emergency fund of fall, fund a 401k, but we've got to find some money, you know, for people to be able to do that. And that's uh, why we focus on the benefits package. And then at that point, they can work with our credit union and they have a myriad of resources uh, to help people. We have the state 401k and the state 457, but they also have the IRAs and different things. People want to save additional monies with the credit union. That is a resource where they can go and they feel comfortable with the credit union too because the credit union's not um, commissioned and everything. Everyone there is salary. So that really helps people uh, have access. And it's easy to access the credit union. They have branches all over. So access, as we said before, um, you can call their call center and they do quite a bit of things online. So we want to remind people that that's there. So one of the things is to remind people what's available to them and how to access it. Because as we said, if people don't know how to access something, they're not going to be able to utilize it. But at the same time, as we try to educate people, some people make more of a connection than others. And hopefully we can get as many people as we can on a financial path with that. Mm -hmm. do, do With all the solution providers in the space who are offering these you know, financial well-being services or products, is 
you know, are they missing something big? Is there something you'd love to see in the space? I think one of the things, you know, in the space that we just want to remind everyone as they have these programs and what people should do is focus. It doesn't have to be a budget, but we want to find ways for people to save money. So as you mentioned, someone's on prescription, so they might want to do the healthcare FSA. Some people might have some kids in daycare. They want to do the dependent daycare FSA. They might not be doing it. They might not know about it. And they can at least save some money that way. So when we did at first partner with our credit union, one of the things uh, that they would talk about in the class is, you know, find ways to save a little bit of money. It doesn't have to be a lot of money, but a little bit of money to, to move things along. So that might be one thing that could easily be forget to be focused on as you come up with all these plans to save in retirement and spend in accounts and HSAs and all this different stuff. So that's one thing that we don't want people to forget about because everyone's on a different financial path and some people may not have a lot of money, some people may, but overall we know the more money people make, I saw one study, uh, the more they spend. So they end up kind of broke at the end of the month like everyone else, maybe with a few more things. So we really want people to get excited and uh, find ways they can save some monies as they move into the uh, different financial plans that people are putting in place and how to access those things. What would be any final words of wisdom um, or insights that you'd like to provide to our listeners? Because I think you've provided a lot. Yeah, there's quite a bit on the topic as it's become more and more of a topic lately. But from an employer standpoint, what we did was we got with different stakeholders, such as the credit union, our retirement system. We thought about what we need to do because we work a lot with the HI units and with the employees. And uh, several of us have uh, been at all different jobs throughout state government. And for us, as you work with the stakeholders, you know, you can put a plan together and it, it's changed over time. So it doesn't have to be static. And we just happen to be able to use internal resources. But even if you have to go out and get some external re uh, resources, you might want to look at it every once in a while and just make sure it's, you know, on a good path and have something out there and then take feedback because we will ask employees and HI units in our case, uh, how did everyone think about this? How did it help you? And as you do that, sometimes you can get feedback about what people want. In our case, a lot of people like to hear about retirement because we have the state retirement system within our state that everyone is part of automatically. So they want to know about that, where another employer might be something a little bit different than honing uh, quite a bit on the retirement. Well, I want to thank you, uh, Bob. Uh, it's, uh, you know, financial well-being is a topic that I feel like needs to get more attention needs to be one of the top priorities. And I really appreciate you coming and, you know, taking your time and sharing what your experience has been in this area. Well, I thank you so much, Jonathan. We want to get the word out on this. So people do pay attention to their finances. As you mentioned, more states and the, these different governors are signing things about financial wellness uh, within the K through 12. So it's picking up a little bit of steam there. So I really appreciate being on this and part of the conference to bring up financial wellness to light, especially during these economic times as everyone's looking for different ways to manage their money and best use their money. So thank you so much for having me.